here to uh, Comics and Color Volume 34. I'm very excited about this. It's been a long time since we've done the last one, I think was in June, when we had um, Ashley Woods and Ram Devaney on. And so today we're gonna to be talking to kids that make comics. This is a Comics and Color I've been wanting to do for a while. I've been uh, trying to get it together, making sure I have enough kids who are making awesome comics. And today we have some incredible uh, kids out here that we're going to talk to. But um, first, we're going to get into a few things about uh, comics and color. So the next, please, don't touch that, please. The next uh, comics and color is going to be December 13th. Haven't got the plan together yet. That's why you don't see any graphics here, but uh, can mark that date down while I figure out what's going to happen next on comics and color. It's um, 12 or 13. Hmm? The, the 12th, because that said the 12th. Oh, 12th is the Saturday, whatever the Saturday is. I believe it's the 12th. Okay, cool. But I might, I often get that mistaken. So um, one big thing in the news this week or uh, recently was Prentice Penny, who we know from um, Insecure, one of the producers of Insecure on HBO, has partnered with, um, oh God, now I'm, Stranger Comics. This gentleman right here is the director of Stranger Comics, Sebastian. I'm forgetting his last name, but there um, he's, so he's coming in as a television producer, um, starting a partnership with Stranger Comics to produce more comics. So not, he's coming in to actually make comics. I thought at first when I saw the story, he was gonna be making television shows, but he's actually going to be producing comics with Stranger Comics. And also one of them that's already on the slate to be produced is Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer, which is one that we, uh, talk about pretty often here, um, David Crownson's property. Uh, I think that's gonna be really interesting. It's a great uh, book, uh, does really, really well. I got to see him recently and uh, he's got some big things going and this is one of them. I also got to meet uh, Sebastian, uh, whose name I can't remember, at New York Comic Con, which I'll talk about in a minute. But it's very exciting, you know, some people with some star power and some push are uh, getting into comics, which just you know goes to prove that comics are um, hot right now, and they're going to start seeing even more independent, you know, black and brown comics coming out because of this deal. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, and um, as a side note, Ashley Woods, who I just spoke about, was on our last one, is works with Stranger Comics on her Niobe She Is Life title, and does some artwork for there. So that's definitely a check out. Um, this is an interesting story. Um, Jerry Kraft, who is a, a very talented uh, cartoonist in his book, The New Kid, which won all sorts of awards. The Newberry Award is the one you see on the uh, cover here, but many more. It got banned in Texas because it was, they thought that it was teaching critical race theory in schools. So they actually banned the book along with a bunch of other books. Um, you know, that had to do with the, the experience of African Americans. And, uh, but the funny thing is the reason why I, I brought this up, not because I think the book should be banned, but it actually, the book was doing very well. It was like number one on the New York Times bestseller list for a while. And it kind of, that had kind of ended, but as soon as it banned, right back on the list. So it actually worked against what they were trying to do. So even more people are buying and reading Jerry Craft's work. And um, I think it's great. It's um, the new kid if you don't know, is about a story about a kid being new in school. I think he's like the only black kid in the school in his experiences at this school. So definitely a great book, good for kids. Pick it up if you get a chance. And Jerry Craft is, has some other great books too. Okay, Coleman. Um, is in the cover, is that the new kid? That is the new kid. He doesn't look black. No, well, he's light brown skin like yourself. Mm, but he doesn't look like. Okay, well, that, that actually comes up like in, the, in the book. Right, and the computer screen doesn't do any favors for the color, but he does, he is a brown kid. And I, oh, yeah, I said, don't judge the book by its cover. Very good, very good. Uh, that's true. Whoever thinks that, I was just bringing it up. Okay, thank you, Coleman. All right, let's see. Oh, so... Yesterday, I guess it was yesterday, was Disney Plus Day, which was very exciting to me. Not that I'm, I'm out here like capping for Disney Plus or whatever, but they released so many new shows that are coming out that are so exciting um, that I'm very excited about. And a few I hadn't heard about. 
So uh, Miss Marvel is coming up soon, which I think is really exciting. She Hulk, which, which is a great book. Um, Tatiana Maslani, who is from um, Orphan Black, is playing um, She Hulk in this. It looks really interesting. Um, Moon Knight, which stars Oscar Isaacs, um, who we know from Star Wars as, uh, uh, okay, I'm forgetting his name, but um, Ironheart. Oh, Poe Dameron. Thank you, Poe Dameron. Um, Ironheart with Riri Williams is going to be a show in and of itself, which is really exciting. Um, Spider-Man freshman year, which is apparently the years before the start of, um, um, uh, not far from home, but homecoming. Um, so it's his early high school career before he becomes uh, Spider-Man, I believe. Um, there's an I Am Groot series, which I didn't know anything about, which I assume must be animated. Um, so for Groot, yeah. And then um, Secret Invasion, which is a great story arc which I'm really excited them putting it into a show. They've been introducing the Skrulls um, who are shape-shifting aliens um, kind of in the Avengers movies and stuff, kind of ship flipping them in there here and there. Um, I think um, Captain Marvel had the biggest Skrull presence. They had a whole character in there. So that's going to be dope. And Marvel Zombies, which is a really, really silly and fun series that came out of the What If series. I don't know if you've uh, seen that. came out recently on Disney+. Plus. Um, had some really crazy episodes. One of them was a zombie episode, but there's a whole genre in Marvel of Marvel zombies that was kind of in the 90s, which was just some really fun um, uh, stories. Just outside the canon of Marvel altogether. But uh, I think, you know, it's really exciting that all these, um, they've got all these titles coming up. I mean, I think we're, years away from some of these but uh you know it's exciting the kind of storytelling that they're doing especially in the episodic format um as opposed to the movies i think is going to be really really exciting and these are some of my favorite characters i mean moon knight has been one of my favorite characters for a long time so i'm excited to see what they do with that and ironheart of course is uh been a really amazing property written by eve ewing um so exciting i'm excited about it so I hope you all tune in and we can uh, chat about them when they start. Coleman's in. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about what uh, my partner Barrington's been doing at the Studio Vexer. He's been creating this space for folks to come together and um, talk about their work and do some live drawing. I know that uh, Shanti was there last week I went to the, uh, I man managed to make it to the end of the concept lab where um, Shanti and Cedric Douglas were kind of talking about their projects and getting feedback. It's a really, really amazing space for artists to come in and talk about their stuff, get critiqued, get feedback. Um, it was really, really a positive experience from what I saw and people, you got a good crowd. Yeah. And uh, People were really into it and um, were giving a lot of great feedback and ideas for folks. So if you have a concept you want to get out there and uh, you know workshop it with some other artists, this is a great place to do it. You can just contact um, uh, Barrington at StudioVexer73 at Gmail, and I'm sure he can uh, make you some space in there. And um, on Saturday nights, they have a life drawing class uh, with a live model, which is not something that you often get to do outside of college. Um, so there's one happening tonight. Um, I think they're, they're happening fairly regularly on Friday and Saturday nights, as you see here. So um, it's, it's and life drawing is just always for artists, an amazing thing to be able to do, um, to just sit there and have a model pose for you and uh, learn the musculature and um, positions and stuff like that. It's, it's invaluable as a, an artist who went through art school it's one of the most valuable things you can do, especially for comic art when you're doing action sequences and stuff like that. It's really good to draw from live models occasionally to kind of get that experience. So if you get a chance, um, check that out, get over there, um, you know, and he's very, you know, you make it when you can, you speak if you can, you know, get involved. It's very um, organic and um, friendly, so. Definitely check that out if you get a chance. 
Um, I just wanted to talk briefly. I got a chance to go to a few cons recently. Um, most excitingly, I got to go to New York Comic Con and be on a panel. And that is a picture of me on a panel um, with Ashley Woods and Ram Devaney. Uh, we talked about amplifying uh, black voices in comics and tech. Um, and another gentleman, Eric Battle, who is a very um, well-known um, editor and um, artist who's worked for Marvel and DC and all those. And we uh, had a really great time talking about that. Um, I made a video that's up on our YouTube channel kind of about my experience, it's mostly me kind of walking around the floor and looking at cosplayers and what was there. So uh, check that out if you get a chance. Um, also got a chance to go to Rhode Island Comic Con um, last weekend on Friday. I was only there for a couple of hours. It's definitely a smaller show and very much centered on celebrities, right? There had tons of celebrities there for it. There's people from Titans. They had this whole clerks thing happening. So it was a lot of that there. That's not particularly my a cup of tea, you know, going and paying for autographs or pictures with celebrities, but clearly it's, uh, it was very popular and there was a ton of people there and they had huge names um, in the community. Uh, most notably the um, folks from Titans, which I'm watching currently, um, a couple of characters from that, which I thought was pretty exciting. Just to, I just passed by them and kind of saw them. But uh, the show was pretty decent. It, you know, it's not far away. I took the train down. It's not super comic focused Rhode Island Comic Con. There was this very small um, artist alley lots of, um, you know, booths with bad swords and mystery boxes and all the things you come to expect at cons. So it's a nice kind of smaller con to get into um, before you go to the bigger ones, but a little commercial for my taste, but it was still a good time. So I would recommend it. So yeah, I, and I'm gonna put up some videos and there's on our social media, I put up some pictures and stuff, but um, I'm gonna put up a video that I made at uh, Rhode Island Comic Con as well. So you can check out a little bit of that. Uh, as I said, I wasn't there for quite as long, so it's not as much footage as New York Comic Con, but uh, definitely worth checking out. It was my first time making it down there. I'll probably go back because it's close and uh, it was still fun. Lots of cosplayers and stuff. Um, we're working on Comics in Color for uh, 2022. This will be the second uh, Comics in Color, um, April 23rd, 2022. So we're pulling things together. So please um, let me know if you are interested in tabling. I'll be sending out invitations and stuff um, probably early in 2022 for folks. But of course, I want all you kids, I hope you'll all come and uh, get tables. You know, we'll have discounted prices, if any cost at all, for kids to have tables um, to come and share your books. I often find it's a really good um, way to uh, motivate you to kind of complete your projects. If you've got something where you're going to be showing your projects coming up. So, you know, make that, you can make that a goal for yourself to uh, have some kind of book, even if it's, if it's just a small photocopy books, mini comics are fine. Even just illustrated pieces are fine, but uh, I think it's gonna be a really good time and we're hoping to get some some good funding so we can do uh, a big show and bring in a lots of cool folks and have lots of cool programming. So definitely mark your calendars for that and uh, keep an eye out for more stuff coming up soon about that. So I always like to do a few recommendations of books for folks to read. Um, this is a picture of from one of our, back when we did in-person Comics and Colors, which hopefully we'll be getting back to that sometime soon. Um, that's the the comics I would bring in to share for folks to see, but I wanted to share some more kid-oriented comics for folks to read. Um, starting out first with um, LJ Baptiste, who's one of our uh, family members here at Comics in Color. He did this new black and white kind of photocopied version of his um, Comicscape series. This one's called Super Ghost Camp and Other Tales. It's really fun. Um, his artwork is great. It's great for kids. Um, he just finished a, a, a Kickstarter for his Omnibus, which was overfunded. So he's got some, uh, so the book is going to be coming together now, and I'm sure we'll see it soon. But uh, LJ's work, if you haven't read it before, definitely 
get it the next time you see him or go to comicscape.net and uh, pick up some books. He's got four volumes. And then, as I said, the omnibus will be coming soon. Um, Low Riders in Space by Raul III. Um, he's got a bunch of great books uh, that are stories about, you know, um, Latino centered stories. On um, this one, Low Riders in Outer Space, I believe there's a Low Riders in Outer Space too. And he does great um, illustrations. And what's really interesting about his stories, not just the storytelling, but he does it all in pen. Like this is all like ballpoint pen that he did this entire book, all the colors are lined in pen. So he just like gets a pack of pens with a bunch of different colors and can create these amazing artworks. I mean, it's really impressive, especially when you find out that it's done in pen. So they're just really fun stories. Everything by Raoul III is really fun. So uh, did you have a comment, Coleman? Yeah. Um, is, the, is the cover made out of pen? Yes. Well, it, yes, he drew this in color, but obviously there's been some enhancements in Photoshop. I mean, this is obviously a solid black in the background, so that wouldn't be done in pen, but you can see that the car and all the figures are done in pen. So, so does that mean like he, he like put it on like his drawing tablet and like like circle, circle the, this picture out and like made the background in his computer? I believe so, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I believe he does all the illustrations on paper. I don't think he does it on digitally. But of course, all books have to be laid together digitally. Really so great questions. Good. Really great yes. questions, sir. Yeah, right? <laughs> Honestly, really great questions. Involved. So this is um, Sophie Escabase's Witches in Brooklyn. I've recommended this one before. It's a really fun story about a girl who moves in with her aunts and finds out that they're witches in Brooklyn. Um, just really fun story, great artwork, full color all the way through. It's a big book to chew through, but uh, really fun. Um, I don't know if there's other volumes. This is the only one I've seen, but it's, uh, it's a really good book. Hmm. Um, another book I'm recommending is um, Twins by Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. Um, it's a story about two twins in middle school, essentially, that are opposite of each other in their kind of adventures, learning to fit in and uh, all that kind of stuff. This is a, I actually have an uncorrected copy that has all these pencil drawings in it. And I think the, the whole thing is full color, but this was kind of, a, I did a, a panel with her and they sent me a promo copy, which is not completely done, but it really, but it has the whole story and it's really fun. Um, Definitely recommend it. Um, this one uh, is really fun, really funny book, uh, Once Upon a Space Time. This is by Jeffrey Brown, gentleman who did um, the pictures of um, Darth Vader and Sun, which is the, the series of pictures. If you're a, a Star Wars uh, lover like myself who absorbs everything Star Wars, it's basically stories about um, Luke as a, and Leah as little kids and um, Darth Vader as their father, just like trying to be a good dad and but still being Darth Vader. Those are really funny. But this is also kind of on that same vein. Some kids get chosen to go on a space mission and they meet aliens and have all sorts of adventures. And it, it's really, really very funny. It was the most thing I like about it. it. You know, it's got kind of a simple line art style inside, but uh, the storytelling is really great. So uh, I recommend that one. Um, this one's a little bit older, uh, tracking more of like teenagers um, called Nubia, Nubia, a real one. This is by Robin Smith and L.L. McKinney. It's kind of, it's taking um, Wonder Woman's sister's story and kind of making her a teenager. In case you didn't know, Wonder Woman has a twin sister named Nubia who is a black woman. Um, so this is her story as a teenager kind of growing up and not knowing that she is Oh, she does know, but she's got to kind of hide that she is an Amazon and is super strong and powerful. And, uh, you know, and she so pretends to be a regular teenager, goes through regular teenager things, but she's also, you know, essentially Wonder Woman. So very fun, a little bit older, more like high school uh, age characters. It doesn't get into anything weird, but- uh, Exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. It has a little action in it here and there. A little. 
A little bit. Maybe not enough let for me you, see, Coleman. Let me see. <laughs> Coleman demands much action out of his stories. And uh, the last two I wanted to recommend are the Boston Power series. I see. Um, thank you. Um, this was done by Boston Comics Roundtable. So this is all local Boston artists who have come together to make stories of, that are centered in Boston about superheroes and stuff like that. So you got a bunch of artists. Um, Keith Knight has a story in here, Ruth Roach, Augustus uh, Jansen, and more. Um, and there's these are the first two issues. I believe they have four now, um, but these are really good. They're good for kids, all kind of kids related stories, uh, fun and Boston based. Uh, great artwork, very different all the way through. I think this one is Brendan Tobin, who I'm a big fan of his artwork, another Boston Comics Roundtable guy. So definitely these are worth checking out. Uh, great for kids. Some of them like history, but mostly just fun, um, exciting stories. Yes, so that's it for my recommendations. So now I would like to introduce our first artist, who is Mr. Coleman Moose. Also a uh, part-time comedian. Yeah. Can you see him? I can't see our... Uh... Just go up. Okay, there we are. All right, so here is Coleman. Uh, Coleman, do you want to introduce yourself, your name and your age? Yeah, I'm Coleman and I'm seven years old. All right, Coleman. What got you into making comics? Who introduced you to comics? I kind of know the answer to this one. My, my papa introduced me into comics and then I started to really like comics. And, I, and then I wanted to make one. All right. And what comics do you like? Like, what are the comics that you read or the shows or the games that you read or play that influence the stories that you tell? And watch. Okay. I, I really like to watch. The things I like to, my games I like to play is Sonic. I got into a new Sonic game, Sonic Generation. It's a pretty fun game. And, and the cartoons I like to watch is like Sonic X, Sonic Boom, uh, Ninjago, all of that TV Y7 stuff. <laughs> um, and the stuff that I like to read. You like Dogman? Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, I really like Dogman, Captain Underpants, and I haven't really read Ant Man. I only get some of that, man, but I like that story too. You also like Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so tell us about um, how you make comics. Do you make them by yourself? Do you make them with your friends? Do you make them at school, at home? I make them at school. School, but more at home. I don't really work together on comics with people. And yeah. You don't ever work with other people? I work, I don't usually work with people, but I work with you if I want to publish it. Right, right. Work with X-Men Forces. Okay. So how, can you tell us about how you make comics? Like you, okay, you've got a piece of paper, you got a pencil. Go. How do you make comics from there? So I do the cover. I don't write words in the comic because I just like telling the story myself. And the cover is like is like super cool. And and the new comic I made is with a character I made. So I, I need to show you the drawings. I need to. Oh, some no, there's there's only like three pictures. So here's like don't fall so like this guy i just started him because of this youtube thing that i saw called nazo and me and i and i got inspired by that so i made this character called speed, speed. Also, no, no, no. and i'm just making the 3d drawings of things see here i i thought the nose would be up here but they thought so that's why you see I like that nose. Okay, next. And here's the last picture of him. He looks super cool. 
and I'm working on a long comic book that has a lot of chapters in it. An action. And there's nothing right. on that page yet. Okay. So do you want to tell us real quickly about X-Men and the Big Adventure? Can I? Can I? Like the process of making it? Have a seat. The process of making it. How long did it take? Like about uh, three months to like do the to do the boxing, the boxes, I, and Tracy, my old teacher in level one, gave me this huge book, and I don't know what to do with it. So I did the cover that looked horribly terrible. Not that cover. It just said X-Man on it, and, it, and X-Man was just standing there doing nothing. And he was super fat. I wanted him to be like Sonic, because I love Sonic. And then it took me three months, like, I think it was like September, October, and November. And I also did stick figures inside the comic because I didn't want to do that much detail. Until now, I didn't even know I was going to publish it. So I was like, why don't you tell us a little bit about who X Man is? He's he's really fast. He likes mac and cheese and chili dogs. Cause mac and cheese is my favorite food. So mac and cheese. And he's really fast. And he jumps high. And he's strong. And the 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 X is for no the what was that you said. I forgot. Extra fast. That's is for extra fast. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Mm-hmm. And I also made a lot of different characters, like the person you see on the screen. Okay. Well, we're going to share that. We're done um, talking about your comics. Um, so last question is, well, you just said you publish your work. And how do you share it with people? Um, my, pa- my papa. He, he sketches it out on his computer and then I color it like and I have to tell him what's happening because when an X-Men forces that were working on for the second comic when I wasn't there he did the wrong thing and start, thought that Elman was X-Men and it's really confusing. I should have made Elman look so much different. But uh, the question was and that's good thank you for finishing telling us about the process but how do you share? Like, how do you get the comics out to people? Go to a con, and when, when we're selling, I I get my comics out that we've totally finished, and then people walk by and look at the comics. Sometimes we, sometimes they. I want this comic, and it's it's really fun to sell comics. Mm-hmm. And what do you sell them online? Yeah, I sell them online. They're just ten, ten dollars and no cents. If you want one right now, it's on Etsy.com. If you don't have Etsy the app, you can go on Google or And what should they search for? Etsy.com and they should search on the Etsy.com. X-Men and the Big Adventure. Did you put the shirt online? Not yet. Uh, okay. And you have a request for the shirt right now? You can ask. Okay. Okay. So another thing you, I know you do because I know you is you like to do animation. So let's show them this, this superhero part one animation, and then you can tell them how you did that. Okay. So can you zoom in on it? No. Oh, n- until it's stop. Okay. See, you can. Yeah, that's, it's 22 seconds. Okay. Oh no, it's not on the full screen. Perfect. Okay, so can you tell people how you made this animation? Because you made this animation all by yourself. Can I? So what was the process? Let's see this. 
So the process was really hard. I had to like sketch everything out myself. You see that? Look at my the the mouse thing, and and you see that man sleep sleeping over there. He was super hard to. Dr I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He was super. I have to do this. Okay. You see that man over there? He was super hard to draw. Like I had to use a layer for that. Two layers, in fact. I and I thought when I used the other layer to make like the background, he would stay there. But when I pressed the blue part in there, um, the whole thing covered with blue. Mm. The whole screen. So I had to line it up again. And you see those terrible hands? You see those? Like those things over there? I literally had to like retrace it because it was super tiny. That was so tiny. And it took me about four days, two days. And how did you come up with the story? I came up with the story and thought about Dragon Balls and Instant Notes. And I like, and it was the action was was really fun and the part when he like turns like his hair turns uh purple he he's like powered up more or he's revealing his superpowers or something like a superhero i want it wanted it to look like dragon ball z for some reason okay cool is there anything else you want to tell folks about your comics or animation? Should I tell them about the future? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to, if you, if you have YouTube, I know one of you doesn't have YouTube. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Which is? Which is CB Loose Productions. And I have more animations on CB Loose Productions. And also, I also have some animations on CB Loose Pro on Instagram. All right. Make sure to make sure to follow my Instagram. Like it. Okay. And last question: What are you working on next? I'm working on. You know that I'm trying to work on in stick nodes. Some learning. You, if you don't know what stick nodes is. And I know one of you knows what stick nodes is. Um, um, stick nodes is this animating app where like there's the stick figure and you can like move it around like this. And then you, when you add a frame, it's like really cool. You can make some good animations. And I wanna, I'm making some a running animation that I should pop remember. And and now I'm working on a new animation. It's it's called stick figure from Stick Moves Pro and Stick Figure from Stick Moves. Just FYI, it's Stick Nodes, yeah, not Stick Moves. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Very different uh, kind of software. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, stick Nodes, N-O-D-E-S, like the spots. So it's a basically an animation program where it sets the nodes and you can move the bodies with the nodes. You make it look hilarious. Boom, boom. Yeah, so. More stick node animations coming from Coleman. You can check them out on his Instagram and YouTube. Uh, YouTube. All right. Thank you so much, Coleman. You're welcome. That was awesome. All right. Who's next? Oh. Let's talk to. No, don't. Come on. <laughs> Putting a video in here clearly makes this a little bit difficult. The author of Jolt, who shall remain nameless, who is here with his dog man shirt on. So unmute yourself there, author. And um, tell us, how did you get into making comics and who introduced you to making comics? Well, funny thing, I used to hate to draw until I started reading Captain Underpants and Dave Pilkey was basically the main reason I got introduced to comics. Nice. And so did you start doing um, Dave Pilkey inspired comics or did you start with superheroes? I actually, I think I started.
started with I think just like a random thing because the first I the first book I ever made was called Spoon and Fork. It was just like a picture book, no words at all. I did that with some with one of my friends, and that was the first book I ever made. I but love it. I love the concept, Spoon and Fork. That sounds like fun. So what um comics and video games? Obviously, you like a Captain Underpants. But what kind of video games and shows and stuff do you like and how do they like influence your comic making? Well, I like most Sonic games. Um, the yellow the yellow character on it is called Jolt. Um, he he was originally based on Sonic until I, I started just getting rid of the Sonic theme and adding more stuff. All right. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about? I like about... most Sonic games, and I like Minecraft. Some comic books I like, like they're pretty classic: Calvin and Hobbes and Garfield. Those are great comics. Yeah, I read them. Uh, a TV, a couple TV shows I like are Phineas and Ferb, and 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 most Lego Star Wars things. Nice. All good ones. I find that when you someone tells you what shows they like, you kind of get an idea of like their sense of humor and like the kind of stories that they enjoy. So do you make comics by yourself? Is this doing it by yourself or do you do it with friends or? I mostly do it by myself most of the time. I've done like a couple with friends, but mostly by myself. Cool. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this character, Jolt? You told us, told me that he was based in the, can you stop please? Yeah. Based in the Sonic world, but tell me more about who he is, what is his power set, what kind of adventures does he have? Well, he's basically this, he was originally the, like, the origin story. Well, the first, this is, it, the book that I made in it is it called Jolt the Porcupine, but the origin story of it is like basically this porcupine that got lost in the forest, and there's this weird guy who finds him, but then this weird, the weird guy who found him wants to take over the world, and he disagrees, and then he somehow finds this weird gem that makes him human-like. That was the original origin story. He's basically this human, half human porcupine guy who, um, who the intro, Jolt is a porcupine who can run faster than the speed of light, shoot electric balls, and even run through time. That was the intro of every single Jolt book I've made. Nice. Wow. That must have been hard to redo that intro. <laughs> been hard. Wait, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so... Do all of your do your comics have words now, or do all of your comics just don't have words? Oh uh, yeah, now all of my comics have words. All of my comics have words now, but yeah. Can I have a question? I have a question. Yes. Did you write that intro song? Did you write that about Joel? The intro, yes, I wrote the intro. You really wrote that mm -hmm. intro song. That was a great job. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Great job on that intro. It's like what I write at the beginning. Of yeah. I got Minecraft. Good game. Keep playing. <laughs> yeah, good game. We, we played it this morning. Yes, yes, you did. Try not to get stuck in front of your house or else you get killed by an iron golem. <laughs> Dude, I play creative. I don't want to know y'all survive with people. Okay, okay. We're not going down the Minecraft hole. Minecraft right? Lane. I know that if I, uh, just this yeah. one right here, that if you start talking about Minecraft, that could be the entire thing. And we're just talking about nothing but Minecraft. But no. I'd rather talk a little bit more about comics. Well, well, Minecraft. Well, my, character, I like you, could you. my character has a couple um, other characters in it. His story yeah. basically, so that evil guy kind of tries to take over the world with robots. The one with the spatulas? It looks like spatula hands. <laughs> They're actually. I was about to say that. <laughs> what are they? Uh, yeah. I mean, author. I, that, I 
I kind of tried doing blasters, but now I just change them to spatulas. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to be spatulas. I'm sorry. If they were like missile launchers or something, I'm sorry. Well, it doesn't really look like missile launchers. If we just added like a little bit more like... But think of what you could do with spatulas. You could just slap people around on <laughs> But you should be giant bug swatters. There you go. I like that. So why don't you, you tell us about my eggs. who these are? Make my eggs up. <laughs> I know who. He's like the best egg maker ever. <laughs> um, so tell us about, so that's the, the bad guy on the robot here. Who yeah. are these other characters you have on this? Well, the one, who, the, so the ones at the bottom are the one that's yellow underneath the drawing of Jolt. The one that's underneath it, that has the red eyes. Mm -hmm. Isn't he Bolt? He was originally just like the evil twin of Jolt. And his name is Bolt? Bolt, not Bolt. Bolt. Like I just, Bolt. I just Bolt. Jolt and put a B in front of it, so. You know that? That works. You know that? That's not. And then next to him is, um, is, is, I think it was, Wait, okay, I'm just gonna do the one next to the green one. He, right. he is Steel Jolt. He was uh, based on Metal Jolt from Sonic, which I no, know. No, it's Metal Sonic. Oh yeah, Metal Sonic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, oh, and then the one, the green one is Midnight, based on Shadow the Hedgehog. Mm. Oh. The characters next to Jolt. Uh, the red one is Flare, based on um, based on Tails. The other characters, Iron and Splash, they were just well. Iron was based on Knuckles, but Splash was just random, random idea that came to me. Awesome. Yeah, so Knuckles, you make Knuckles your and Shadow are two favorites. I'm sorry, say that again, Sa? Knuckles and Shadow are my two favorites. <laughs> Agreed. Well, oh, well, I was gonna sh show the original picture of Jolt, but Jolt has taken a lot of major evolutions. <laughs> the one on the, the one on the right is the newest Jolt, not the one that has it on the paper in the background, the one that's... The big one. Yeah. Uh, it's the newest pharma jolt. I was actually thinking of taking another evolution, but that might be maybe next year. I'm I make my comics on paper first. I've made three rough drafts of this comic so far. Uh, I'm still working on the final copy. Probably, and I'm probably gonna try. This the final copy I'm probably gonna do on my iPad. That's the one that I'm gonna try to um copy like copy and sell nice. and try to publish. Very good. Coleman has a question. I have one question for you, Oliver, or many. So what wait. Okay, so why do you evolution jolt every year? I don't know. I don't think that's an unusual thing to do. A lot of times, comic characters, they do like either what, I mean, you acknowledge that he's evolving, but sometimes comic characters just change over time because of different artists or the artists change the way they feel about it or for many other, any sort of reason, but I don't think it's an unusual thing for a, a character to evolve in that way. And I also like the shoes on Jolt. It's very cool shoes, very cool shoes. I agree. Mm -hmm. Did you have any more questions? Yeah. And why does Bolt look like Jolt, but a little bit backwards? Well, the original Bolt kind of, the original bolt kind of looked too much like iron with this with the spikes, so it just kind of made it um, made it less up. But now I'm just thinking of giving him three spikes, 
and I might change the eyes to inside of them triangular and more. Okay. Mm. Nice. Don't make it too much like an iron. I like that it's it's still kind of evolving. Sa, did you have a question? You have more? Yeah, because yeah, I just had a question. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's like a lot like Sonic because the guy and the robot with the um spatula hands, he kind of he kind of looks like Dr. Eggman. Like classic Dr. Eggman. Yeah, that was kind of the intention he thought the cookie looks like. Yeah, and I think it's uh you know, it's, go ahead, Sa. It, it's good though because Dr. Eggman could give him eggs and he could just cook them on the frying pan. <laughs> right, it all fits together. I love it. <laughs> so you say you you make um, most of your comics on paper. Do you? So do you? When you said you made the three rough drafts, are those all pencils or did you get into colors? They're, they're well? all pencil. They're all pencil. I only did one in color. Gotcha, gotcha. And what? so as you're doing these versions, is the, the characters evolving through the Yeah, versions? yeah, they, ch they change throughout it. Even my final rough draft is going to change a lot in the, to the regular one. Because my, the, my last rough draft, I think I did like, I don't know, in 2020. So it's probably going to evolve a lot from that rough draft. Yeah, and I think I think I'm glad you brought that up because that's definitely a thing that happens in comics. You know, people do multiple versions and develop the story and characters as they go along. So I think that's a very natural way to uh, develop a story like that. I think it you know only makes it better the more you you think about it and rework it and retool it. But I think that's great that you're doing that. Um, so you said you're going to publish this book i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to do it i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it i'm probably just gonna start by just randomly just being going my house is really close to the arbor reader i'm probably just gonna take like a folding table and just be like hey do you want to buy my comic or something like that <laughs> <laughs> well that is a good way to do it but there's also you know there's comic cons like um the one that we do here at Comics and Color, the Comics and Color Festival, where you could table at that. There's like, you can go to farmer's markets or artisan markets and stuff like that and table. Um, Nile and Coleman and I all tabled at the Mass Independent Comic Expo um, uh, this past August. So there are lots of opportunities. And Oliver, I would be happy to help you um, figure out how to get it into book form in a way that can be printed commercially. Um, so the same way that I did with Coleman's book, if you'd like. And also, I do, I recommend stick nodes animation. Another recommendation for stick nodes. Why don't you talk, well, tell us about your stick nodes experience. What have you been doing with that? Well, I've actually, uh, most of the things I do, I've been just like, I've been doing, um more stuff like i've been just taking random characters and just making them fight each other that's what i've been doing on stick notes that sounds about what was coleman's doing with it too it seems like my first stick notes i i actually just took like random superheroes like iron man spider-man um batman and just made them battle each other wow nice it seems good for that. That program seems particularly good for that. And I think, you know, I like when Coleman draws out his animations, but Stick Nodes is great because it allows you to kind of direct animations. Like instead of being the animator, you're kind of the director in that situation where you decide what the story is and how they're doing it. Sa, did you have another question? Yeah, but I used to do that all the time where I just took like random heroes. Like, I, what I do a lot was like um, Superman versus like Captain America. We all know how that would end, but I was a kid, so, you know, I didn't know that much. So, and that was back then when I used to think everyone with a cape could fly. <laughs> so, I always, so, like, I would have like a Batman comic, and then 
and then he and then and I always thought that Batman used the grapple gun just for fun. That way he could just really fly anyway. Just like so, grab a hamburger or something. Yeah, like and then so so in the comic he like so we had the grapple gun and they just crunched it. And then just flew to the top to flew to the top of the um a building with the bat signal where Mr. Gordon was. So using a grapple gun. Nice. And he didn't have a badge yet, he just flew. Well, that can be very fun. I, that's what I like that about stick notes because it allows you to do stuff like that. And I gotta say that like, as you know, I've spent hours in debates about who would win Superman versus Captain America, not particularly that one, but you know, those debates about who's stronger, who's faster, the Hulk versus Superman, that Ooh. sort of thing. Yeah, so that's, that's always what see. fun to do. And you can actually animate it in that. That's, yeah, but like Superman awesome. versus Captain America, that's not an argument. That's like a one second fight. Right. <laughs> one, one hit dick. <laughs> but the Hulk, that would be an interesting fight. Yeah, yeah. that's what me and my Papa was. So doing. Oliver, I'm sorry, author, <laughs> keep doing that. Um, author of Jolt. What's up next for you? What is what's your next project that you want to work on? Well, what are you excited about doing next? After I finish Jolt the Porcupine, I'm actually gonna try doing either I'm either gonna try. Um, publishing this like graphic novel, uh, the Chronicles of the Blue Dragon. Mm. And this one I've only started making the characters for, or I might just go to the Jolt Two, Jolt versus Skill Jolt. I don't know. Well, they both sound very interesting. I'd like to hear more about the uh, the Blue Dragon when you've got it uh, more developed. Do you have an idea of what the story is going to be? Developed. Just don't have like the exact like plot of the first one. Well, these like, things take time, but it sounds like a really fun project. Mm -hmm. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, tell us about your work? Um, where we can find any of it if, or anything like that? If I do start publishing it, I'm probably not going to like sell it online it's probably just gonna be random places okay wait well we will look out for jolt books coming up coleman you have another question no i i i have a suggestion for all of them when you start doing your like author. books i mean author of jolt um when you start doing your books maybe you could come along on the you maybe you could come along on some trips with us to go comic selling maybe that's possible okay okay cool well thank you so much oliver i'm excited to see um your when you publish and your next projects i always enjoy seeing your stuff so thank you very much so we're gonna move on to our next person yeah Ooh. Who is Niall? All right, Niall. Now, I really see, uh, I'm really excited by your work and the stuff that I've seen that you've done so far. So why don't you tell us how you got into making comics and who introduced you to making comics? Well, I got into making comics because I, lo I love drawing since I turned like one and a half, not even. And I, um, and I, re at some point, I read a comic book and decided that I wanted to make one for myself. Uh-oh, we lost you there. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, I can hear you. Sorry, go ahead. You decided you wanted to make one and? Um, I decided to make one myself. Mm -hmm. And how old were you at that point? At that point, I was like six. Nice. And how did you get into comics? Who introduced you to comics as a thing to do? Um, my dad introduced me into making a comic. Um, well, not really. Uh, when I was seven or eight, I made um, an original Bad Coppers Good Cop comic. And then when I um, when I was about to turn nine, my dad uh, my dad agreed to do the writing um, for the book with me. So we decided that we were going to make a graphic novel. But then, and we spent a whole year laying out stuff for it, but then we decided that we should make um, smaller comics first. That's a good idea. Nice, so this, so the copy of 
good cop, bad cop that I have is not the, the first one. I got it. Not, well, it's the first official one. First official one, but you did some stories about it uh, before that. Yes. Nice. So what's, uh, yes, this is the one that I picked up at uh, Mice, which is really, really fun book. Um, so what comics, cartoons, or video games do you like and how do they influence your, your writing or artwork? You brought you guys probably haven't heard of these, but I um but I like um but the musician, the gorillas have seriously influenced my um my art and also their music is just cool. Yeah, I love the gorillas. And for you uh, younger folks who are not familiar with the gorillas, the gorillas is like this kind of neo-punk band, but they don't actually exist. They're cartoon characters, right? So there's musicians that kind of play these characters, but they're not actually the people. I don't know, it's really hard. And they do like crazy shows where they use holograms or something to, for the characters. So, and they have great animated videos, which are really, really cool. My, um, my, the, what, the drawing that has four of my characters on it was, um, was based on the Gorillas album cover Demon Days, which is why ah. it used to. Um, my dad cut it off, but it said Donut Days at the bottom. <laughs> Donut Days, love it, love it. So, who are these characters? Tell us about Leo, Bad Cop, Sophie, and Gerald. Leo is um Leo is a um is a hacker, and he um Leo is a hacker of an um. Of a bank robbing team um, of a criminal team, and he um and he hacks security cameras and banks so that people um so that the ro um so that his team can like be able to rob the bank. Mm -hmm. Bad cop is bad cop is the leader of this whole team, and he wants revenge on um, on the arrogant, boastful, large chinned good cop who's shown getting punched in the face in the one next to it. <laughs> So who's gonna punch? Sophie is um Sophie um Sophie is the um is the Asian um is the Asian Japan free who's um who's into martial arts and um and the, by the way I use Google Translate for this don't think I know um I do not assume that I know Japanese I do not <laughs> the the um, the text on Sophie's um, kimono actually means kimono in Japanese. And Gerald is, Gerald is the muscle of the team. He, um, even, though, um, even though he's supposed to look physically imposing, um, he, is, um, he is very dumb and he's, um, and he's nice. Um, and he, um, and he, even, though, um, even though he eats like 12 tons of donuts every day, he, um, he maintains his physical <laughs> strength. <laughs> That's some real fantasy right there, my friend. <laughs> there are two other characters that I couldn't fit in because I wanted it to match the album cover. Gotcha, gotcha. So tell us who the other two characters are. The other um, two characters are um, um, are James, a um, a, a scrawny a, a scrawny um, a scrawny bank. Um, no, he's a getaway driver. He's the getaway driver of the team, but he's always mega nervous and he's um and he's afraid of most board games the other um, the last member is ralph acne ridden 411 um, um mohawked ralph is ralph right there right i love it is he the one who's getting punched in the face with a nike black nike back nickelback so. yeah nickelback oh, oh, nickelback. Nickelback. <laughs> nickelback the lamest no. Rock band ever no are we supposed to not like that guy or something yeah, everybody's supposed to hate him. <laughs> well, the Nickelback shirt will do that. I love all those details. The guy who's afraid of board games. That's pretty hilarious. The, Why is he afraid of board games? This one of, of this one on um, this one on the side is um is a drawing of Sophie fall um falling from the vintage in the um in the ceiling and then um and then um landing on the ground in a stunning pose, sending a table flying. Love it. Great action. Oops. Sorry. That is great action. Uh -oh. I love it. So can you tell us a little bit about 
how you make your comics? Like what's the process from writing, from coming up with the concepts to putting it in the book form? So the process is that the process is that we do the thumbnails after we got a, a good idea for the story of this page. Then I do the pencils and then I ink them. This, is it, these are some a pencil page in progress. Nice. I then I do then I do the inking. Then um, my dad scans it in on Procreate and does the color contrast and adds text. Then we print it. And then we do the same thing, so on and so forth, and so on and so forth, and so on. Yeah. Over yeah. and over and over again. Yes. Nice. So far, so, we have so far we've made a comic book that's twenty-two pages long, a comic book that's sixteen pages long, um, a bunch of loose art, and a comic um, and a comic book that's eight pages long. That's impressive. That's an impressive amount of work. So you you said you you uh, scan it and then do it in Procreate to set in the uh, the inks and colors. That's pretty cool. So, how did you come up with the idea for a good cop versus bad cop, Fury Road? Wait, literally. That so I I um the the title is based on. Um, is obviously based on Mad Max Fury Road. I came up with the I it's based on a scene that I was going the a scene that we were going to do for for the graphic novel. It's also um it's also shown because it's um it's also the first official one because it, it's also the first official one because it's a great way to introduce all the characters and show all their skills. And we had an idea to do one that was all car chase, right? Well, it wasn't all car chase. Mostly. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds cool too. We also, um, also with car chases, we got to and we got um with this um comic, we got to in, um include our care um our heroes, our police officers. I don't like to call them villains because there are no heroes or villains in this story. It's a way mm. of keeping it. You don't. In, you can't see if the bill it's hard to tell if the bank robbers who are um, um if the bank robbers who are the protagonists are the villain or if the police officers who are kind of antagonizing the um the villains it's hard to tell mm. and it's supposed to be yeah i like that that's uh right like real life right nothing's quite as cut and dry as good and evil in this the is real world either it's based um our whole thing is based off like an um is based off like a cop show and it's supposed to um it's it's based off like a cop show and i don't really i did not want to do superheroes because when superheroes it's always clear who's good it's always clear who's bad there's um there's um the dude who's skinny with the big um with the big um cloak and the sharp teeth is the bad guy the dude with um the dude with um the um, with the muscles and the large chin and the, um and the mask is the good guy. Yes, so you're subverting the troops. I love it. This is great. Um, so that leads me into the question of what. So what like comics and video games do you uh, and shows do you love that kind of influenced you to come up with such a an interesting story? As you know, Gorillaz highly influenced this, and um, Gorillaz, the music highly influenced this stuff. I um, another thing that influenced this is Batman comics. Bad Cop is um is based on um, is based off um, Batman, in fact, and the also this um, also this isn't just uh, this wasn't really this isn't based on um, this didn't really help me base the comic at all but it's just a video game i like i like super mario odyssey really good game you should check it out <laughs> you got some uh love for that one me and cleveland mm -hmm. are playing that right also right also also the character from um the character from um, that Gerald, the guy with the donut in this, um, in the very, um, in the picture that's pointing this way, all the way in the corner, mm -hmm. he, 
Um, his personality is based off Mo um, from The Simpsons and also a mixture of Homer from The Simpsons. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone reference Mo from The Simpsons as someone that they're basing a character off. I love it. Oh, this is great. I, I think your work is wonderful. You and your dad are doing great stuff. So what's next for you? What projects are you working on now? You mentioned a graphic novel. We um, we just finished this comic book. Oh, wow. What's that one called? This is called Gerald's Alphabet Book. Warning, it is not actually educational. Let me show you. What is, what is educational? It means it teaches you something. Here's some pages. Nice. Great contrast. Love it. Well, I can't wait to see this one. What's it about? This one. This one, um, I don't know. Um, this one, we were um, thinking about something to do for our next comic, where um, and my dad found a file that he wrote like five months ago as an I um, as a joke idea. Then we decided to turn it into a comic book, and we um, and we decided to turn it into a comic book, and we um, and we had and we also got a chance to introduce um some new characters. Uh, like um, like weird old Dr. Mad, this dude with the afro and the glasses. Love it. He looks cuckoo. So is this is this a, a story as well? Or is yes. it just kind of a this is a story. Can you explain this, what kind of story it is? This story is this story, I don't know why um, my dad came up with this script like a while ago. It um it's a about our characters um, trying to our characters trying to um, to make an alphabet book, but they're all stupid and uncooperative. So it's um so it's hard for them to even find an X word. You want to show the next page? That'll be hard for anyone. And do the alphabet. Here's the X page. You want to read it to him? What does it say now? This page with the X says, not this again, time for an X word. Excavator, exit, extinct. None of those words start with X. X is for, dad, how do I say this word? I don't even know, I don't think. Let's just, just <laughs> pretend we know what this word says. Uh, um, an abnormal dryness of, um, of cornea, the of the cornea typically associated oh. with vitamin A deficiency. Sure, whatever. I love it. Yeah. That sounds great. And I look forward to getting that book from you this next is... time we're in the same space. What? Right, I'm asking this question. Do you um, sell your books online? Where can people find your work? The first time we ever sold our thing was um, was at Mini Mice, where we sold our um, where you where we sold the one that you currently own. Mm -hmm. And then we hope to go to Comics and Color. Yeah, we hope to go to Comics and Color in April with like five stuff, um, nice. with like five comics. This um, this thing, the one that you already have, this eight page comic, nice. um, and um, and hopefully two more. Wow. That we're not in the process of making it. Ambitious, I love it. Well, I can tell you, you're in. <laughs> you're in Comics and Color. Hey. The has been approved. <laughs> Who made it? Comics and Color? That's me. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing your work. It's amazing. I can't wait to see more of it. Um, if you do end up like putting it online somewhere, let me know and so I can post it up on the page and folks can buy it or read it or whatever. But definitely, you know, in April, I'm excited to see what new stuff you have. So just say thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have questions or is it? A I think they want to move on because there's more people to go, but just say thanks. Yeah. So if anybody does have a question, just hop in. But otherwise, we'll move on. So we got a couple more artists Oliver, to talk to. Oliver had the most questions. Hmm. All right. So next we have. Mr. Jacob de Pong. So I met Jacob long, long ago when at the beginning of Comics and Color. 
And he was just a little guy who came in and would come in and draw. And then I found out he was going to the same school as my son. And so they got to be, you know, go to school together. So I got to see him more often. And he would come and he and his lovely parents would come to the meetings and everything. And I got to see his kind of artwork develop. He is a expert at Attack on Titan. If you have any questions about that, he's the guy to ask. And so, uh, and I'll let you uh, introduce yourself from there, Jacob, and tell a little about yourself. Hey, my name is Jacob DePalm. I am 13 years old and yeah, I, I do art like this. I was kind of a casual draw, I was kind of a casual draw at first. I was usually just drawing like anything that I knew, like Attack on Titan, like the Armor Titan right on the screen. And then after a while, I developed my own characters, like the character on the left, I got some of the idea, including his power, some of his power sets from My Hero Academia, and the concept of multiple abilities from Todoroki in that anime. And I was able to create my own series with it. But yeah, I just, I started like kind of small, and then in like three years, that's where I got to. Great. So how did you get into first, get into comics and making comics, and who introduced you to the idea of making your own comics? Well, first you have to understand, I only started doing this like two to three years ago. So like, or like three to four years ago. So like the, the transformation is kind of large. Cause I first, I first got introduced to anime when I was nine. I watched One Punch Man and Attack on Titan on Netflix. And in the first season trailer, I saw that there was a comic and then I literally, that's called manga. And I was able to find the Attack on Titan manga and I started reading that. So now I have volume one to 33 and I've just been waiting for the final volume to come out and the creator of Attack on Titan his name is Hanjime Izayama and I don't know him personally but that was kind of what introduced me in wanting to do anime and comics so is your goal to create an anime to animate well my goal isn't exactly to create an anime my goal is mostly to like make a manga because actually I was making like the panels for what I would, would eventually be like the first in a chronicle timeline of events of a series that I've created. And I actually have my own name for it. I call it the Four Corners of Time. Ooh. If you want to find out more about that, then like, you, if you find me at the Comics and Color Festival in April, you can ask me about that. I don't exactly have any social media websites or anything like that, but yeah, it's, it's kind of what I've been doing. That sounds very interesting. Well, I know you named um, Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia is a couple of uh, shows that you enjoy. So what other are some other cartoons, comics, games that you like and recommend to folks or that influenced what you're doing besides those two you mentioned? Well, besides anime, my favorite character of all time is The Flash because I'm just obsessed with the power of speed and the power, like the ability to just run at insane speeds in general and to be able to travel to different worlds to travel throughout time. And that's kind of where I got the idea for the series, not speed in general, but the concept of time. That's kind of the end result is four characters like this one. Their names are Rock Bryson, Ryan Bryson, and two others. Their names are Aiden and Ryan. I haven't figured out their last names. Those characters are still kind of in development. But they all have the similar power set of enhanced super strength, fire abilities, speed, the ability to manipulate pure energy. They can manipulate this type of weird substance that can turn into almost any weapon or giant or pretty much anything they want it to turn into. And they can like they can use that to kind of like manipulate how they, I guess, do certain things. Like for instance, the super strength ability. I got the idea of using some type of Air Force for Brock Bryson because his main ability in general relates to nature. So I thought that maybe he can kind of have like this Air Force power where he can use a large blast of air as an attack. Mm. Nice. And for the other characters, they use like water or fire or like light from the sun, like solar flares and stuff like that. Yeah, there's one thing I noticed uh, chatting with you at Comics and Colors that you, your character development is so good and interesting. Like you come up with these amazing characters and have all these power sets and uh, you know attributes 
that you add into them, which I always thought were really, really great. I actually had them. I actually mm -hmm. have a picture of one of my characters. He's the brother of the guy on the, um, on the left. This is the one I was talking about. He can control water. He's pretty much surfing on water. Oh, nice. Nice. So how do you um, how do you create these guys? Do you sketch them out first? Do you like write a list of powers? Or how do you and how do you develop your stories as well? Well, I first started out by like I. I first started out with just using Halo characters like this, and I was kind of mimicking Izuki Midori's quirk from My Hero Academia, and then I just eventually made that my own character, then I added all those other abilities, and then it just got to a point where I made this entire world where everyone is born with a superpower. Either they're either born with a superpower, or they're just born with what to us is superhuman strength. So they have like heightened senses, they have superhuman strength, they have super speed, like the fastest a human can run is like 300 miles an hour. And yeah, that, that's basically the point of the world. And you only get abilities like that if you're born with the right kidney. The right so what? Had to, if you, you only get abilities like that if you're born with the right kidney. So I had to get kind of specific about how the powers work in general. You said because a red like, kidney? A right kidney. So a right if kidney. Born, if you're born without your right kidney, your life, expe your life expectancy is about the same here depending on how good you take care of yourself but in general like the like in general if you are born with the right kidney like there's literally no sickness that can kill you in that world you'll literally live to the age of 200 so I, I, I kind of had to think of, I, I had to think about how their superhuman abilities would also affect them living like their day-to-day -day lives because right. I was thinking about it. It's kind of similar to my hair academia because they have powers. Not all of them can use them to be heroes because you have to have some type of like, not license, but yet you're legally required to be allowed by law to use your abilities. Therefore, meaning you have to go to, you have to go to some type of school or to learn how to use them. Right. Well, so I, I really of, like that um, stories where they realize that having superpowers is not always going to be great thing you're not always going to get superman powers or uh exactly that that's kind of where i put this where it is because like as godly as their powers are they range from being able to control the literal forces of nature to being able to manipulate space time in and of itself to create an entire universe in seconds it comes with a lot of like it comes with a lot of caveats and it comes with a lot of like dark sides to it all they're not like they are gods but they don't actually have full control over what they do Basically, what I mean by that is that most of their abilities are controlled off of, they're kind of controlled off of emotion. Like, one of them actually, I call him Reaper. He's like a, he's a split, he's split into two different entities because his original role was to deliver souls for, to either hell or heaven. And I kind of based his character off of Venom. Ooh. So he's and, both good and bad kind of at the same time. Or yeah, it's just, yeah, it's because of the fact that people have such a bad, like, not such a bad association with it, but because it's not exactly the best association with death, his consciousness was kind of split into two. So there was, like, an angel version of him, and then there was a devil version of him. That's the one that Brock Bryson got stuck with. And then his copy, the one who lives in a completely mere multiverse, mm. he's the one who has the angelic version. Really cool. I it's kind of hard to explain. Build your stuff. So do you do most of your artwork um, traditionally, like pencil, paper, or do you get into digital art at all? Well, I usually draw them like this on paper, and then my mom, she'll just take a picture of it and put it online somewhere, anywhere, or something like that. My dad will tell me to take pictures or I'll do something 3D like this, but I haven't exactly gotten to digital yet. I've been trying to make it a goal that by, like, like before the end of the decade, I'd, I'd like to get on digital at least once, even if it is just animation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good goal. I don't think, it, hopefully it won't take you that long to get there, but uh, yeah, I think you'd like the digital work process. It's much easier. Yeah. 
super easy. So what are you working on next? What's your, your next goal? I mean, besides getting on digital, but like I, we're, you're gonna take this story about the world that you're building and what are you, what are you gonna make out of it? Well, my original idea was to like, before I was just kind of thinking, I'm just going to make this as long as Naruto because it has to be like a three generation long story in order to actually complete it. Because there's a cycle that they have to break because the original story is there's a reincarnation cycle that goes father, son, father, son, father, son, and it never breaks. It just keeps going back. It keeps looping the same timeline over and over again. And I thought to myself, well, if it goes father, son, father, son, grandson, they break the cycle and the powers just all split up all these different powers that come with a different type of consciousness split up in the end. And that's kind of how I thought it would end. And then I just kept, I kept going back on it. And I thought to myself, I got to take time and slow down. So now my goal is just to become, to develop all four of the main characters for this first series and the four characters for the next series and the four characters for the third series, because they all intertwine with each other. But I got to take it one step at a time. Absolutely. I think that's a, a great way to do it. Well, thank you so much, Jacob. I, I love your work, man. And I'm excited to see what's coming up next. And the, the world building, I mean, your world building and character development are always super exciting to me. So I'm really excited to see a product, your product when you get it done. But thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next artist, who is Miss Nina Williams. Um, Hi. Did you I, introduce yourself? Um, I'm Nina. I'm 12. I uh, really like making up stories and creating characters. So comics was kind of the next step. Great. And so if you could share. Yeah, absolutely. You can share if you want to share some more artwork. Yes. Mm. Um, I'm going to try to. Mm -hmm. And your desktop one. Let's see. I you know can't tell if it's walking, but um I can't oh you know what I have to release my share. That's what it is. Sorry. All right, now go ahead. There you go. Whoa. Um, I just had some uh uh most of what I have to share are just sketches, but mm -hmm. I pulled up some uh <laughs> of the stuff I've been drawing lately. These are great. Uh, Thanks. So I might know the answer to this, but who got you into making comics? Um, I would say um, I really like to um, kind of make up stories. So I just thought comics was a good way to do that. Um, I would, as for who introduced me to comics, um, probably, I'm not sure. Um, a lot of my family is really into art, so probably um, that affected it. Yeah, I know you come from a very artistic family, <laughs> so it's just a natural thing. So what kind of um, stories do you like in comics, cartoons, video games? Um, I, some of the shows and like um, games I really like, I like the Owl House, Gravity Falls, and um, I was really like uh, Pokemon. Um, I would say I was kind of inspired by um, the fantasy and world building of those shows. Um, I really like making up fantasy stories and like uh, creating walls around them. Awesome. So tell us, uh, tell us like just a quick summary of like one of the stories that you've written that you really like. like um, one of the actually, uh, these, uh, some of the characters that I'm showing, um, it's pretty, I'm pretty all into making it, but um, basically I'm making a, I'm planning on making a fantasy, fantasy story related around them. So who um, are they? I don't really have names to them yet, but um, basically it, I'm trying to give a good summary. Um, 
basically it's about uh like witches and humans and um like basically the premise of the story is like witches and humans are kind of separate um but like a witch ventures over to the human kind of um city and like lawns that what the other witches say about them isn't entirely correct Mm. i love it that's a great concept for a story Mm. And so uh, is there any like, so I know you say you hadn't had, got names for these characters, but you have like, this one is a, a witch and she is this kind of person or like any attributes about them? Um, sure, uh, this one over here, I can't tell if you can see my mouse or not. But, I can, but, yep. Um, basically, this is the witch character. And um, my idea for it is that She's kind of part of like a council of witches. Um, and um, generally the witches are pretty against humans, but um, she kind of rebels against that and goes over to the human city anyway. I love it. That sounds really cool. Uh, so do you um, write these stories, make these images? Is this something you do on your own? like this? you're going to write this entire story by yourself or do you work with your sisters or any your friends um i usually like i usually end up drawing it by myself but sometimes i'll go to like my family or friends to help with like story ideas or something um yeah all right and so how do you tell me how you like develop your characters do you come up with a concept of an idea of kind of who they are and then you build the structure of the person around them or do you make a person you know bu- uh, build the character and then say come up with the concept of who they are after you've already designed the character um how i come up with the characters is i usually think of like a story i want to do and then i'll kind of make characters who fill those roles um then from there, I'll walk out like their personalities and like um, stuff like that. Okay, cool. And what would you like to do once you've written the story and you've drawn it out and you've put it together? What do you want to do with it? Um, at the moment, I'm not really sure, but uh, I'd like to make a comic with these characters and. Um, I'm not really sure how I'd share it yet, but maybe uh, like put it on Instagram or something like that. Okay, cool. And you, uh, are you gonna come to Comics and Color Festival? You gonna table there? I'd like to. Yeah, cool. We'd like to have you. I'd like to have a table there <laughs> with that. I'd like her to have her work on that table. I'd like to publish. <laughs> That daddy's dream is I would like to be a publisher and publish her work. That sounds great. And family, of course, you know, I'm very much in support of uh, family uh, working together to create uh, products or books or whatever. So um, characters have to be seen. She's created some (laughs) great characters. Right, so I, you, you see me pointing at the screen. You should show that one. You should show that one. Yeah, She's got some one great characters that need to be shared with people. What's She's this one on the top job. right under Google Chrome? Can we see that one? See, that they see it. I'm sorry. It's there. Ah, they move it up. Love it. You've got like really good design and, and the personality in each of the characters really, you know, it tells me about the story. Uh, sorry, I'm doing my thing. My fault. Yeah, it, it helps. I mean, the these characters obviously have a lot of personality in them already. And you can tell. And you can also tell that you you have training. Like I can see in your your sketches that you yeah. have been trained how to draw a face, how to draw a figure. It's very, very, very nice work, Nina. Could you tell them what you use to create it? Um, I usually use Procreate, um, to, um, 
to draw. Um, I also have used like uh, Photoshop a bit. Do you do um, all your work digitally? Most of my work, but I do have uh, a couple sketchbooks where I like lay out ideas and concepts. Her work is what I want to be at. I want to be to the point where I work digitally. Like I'm trying to make that transition. I'm learning from her. So it's kind of going like <laughs> opposite. It's going, yeah, I won't say backwards, but it's going in another direction <laughs> where I'm learning it through her and watching her create digitally, which is different than how I do it. So, and I'm sorry, again, sorry to interrupt, but like, yeah, it's the learning the process through her has been huge. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, do you, um, do you prefer one or the other? Um, not really. I think I, um, they both kind of have their pros and cons, I guess. I feel like it's easier to edit in um, when you're working digitally, but uh, also that's just something about traditional. And sharing, like with traditional art, I have to take a photograph of it and the photograph might not be that nice. With digital art, you just literally share it and it's perfect and somebody could print it out, <laughs> make a poster size of it, you know, it's like, thank you, thank you. It exists wherever you want it to be, which is really- And nice. then you can post it, right? <laughs> this is the future. That's what artists like myself are trying to get used to and she's working in it right now, you know? So, good yeah. stuff. Well, you know, the, the younger people are gonna bypass us. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> in the Real quick. Yes. They, you know, they just, they just have a feeling for the digital side of things so much more than we do. And I just, I mean, it just shows in your work, you know, you, uh, you clearly have a really good handle on digital art. Thanks. So, that's very exciting. Um, so is there anything else you want to share about your work or your stories or where we can find any of your work if it's out there? April. I have an Instagram account, but I don't post on there that often. Um, and I can't really think of much else to share. Right. We do have a nice date with April. We're hearing that the comics is coming up, the convention's coming up. We would love to have a spot on the table, I think. Oh, you got it. Anybody who's here today, y'all all have tables. For free? Hey, 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 whoa, hey. <laughs> think about the money. I like you. I, I like, like you. you. <laughs> That's yeah, big. Yeah. This kid. I know, I know I'm so funny, I'm so No, but I'm sure it'll be very much discounted for local young people. I think what we did was like $25 a table last time. Don't quote me on that, but that's, that's it'll true. be very low for the, the youth. You're a smart person. You're not funny, you're very smart. <laughs> Bless. All right, thank you so much, Nina. The, your work is wonderful. I'm very excited to see what's coming next. And I want to read this story about the witches. Mm. You told one copy of the book or whatever you make out of it already. All right, thank you. So next we have Sa, Mr. Sa. Wait, wait, wait hang on. Um, can he share his screen? He absolutely can. I will release my share. Release! How to make that? Hang on. <laughs> uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, so share. Hang on, man, guy. Okay. Woo! Woo! In color, yes. All right. Hey, from the festival. So, this is my favorite cosplay. It is old, and I've been making comments. Speak loudly. And I, I'm ten years old, and I've been making comments since I was five years old. I like to, I like to draw, use Legos. I've I've even done some stunt motions with Legos. Nice. I like to play basketball, the martial arts, science experiments, and I'm learning to code by building small computers with my uncle and cousin. So cool. Sign me up. <laughs> I'm working on a comic called Little Leaguers. It's about the Justice League going 
to school as kids. And as you see, and, uh, no. you want to talk about? It? Yeah, and as you can see here, it, like the first page is um, Bruce in the Batcave, and like the real Batman and Batwoman are his parents. <laughs> and then it's like the same thing for um Superman and Wonder Woman. So like it's the so like right here it's the House of Solitude, and the House of Solitude. House of Solitude. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> and then, and then Superman's asking his, his son if, if he's ready for school, and he's like, yeah, but Batman over here is just like, yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> and, no, 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 no. and then at the Amazon house over here, so, so Wonder Woman's mom is basically like ready for school, and she has cereal in her mouth, so she's like, mm. I love it. And okay, next. Oh, go ahead. In the story, their enemies are the bullies played by villains. So, so you can see Joker has different art because those are from two separate book books. And so, like Joker's like the scary one that people always run away from. Like as you can see in this one right here, he's like make way for joker and that like creepy smile that girl's like past his eyes for some reason and <laughs> and then in here this one was just like like a poofed out hair joker and then this and the second one it was just like the cartoon ones like with the okay. yeah and then luxor and brainiac nice. our two, our two um Sidekicks basically, like looks like there's the muscle, and then it's kind of like Niles thing. So like, there's like the muscle and like the hacker guy, and then the main one. You need a good team. Mm -hmm. Either a villain or a hero. That's it. That is amazing. Junior leaguers, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, so how did you get into making comics? So, same thing as the author of Jolt, I just, like, read a Captain Underpants, and then I I saw the two kids, George and Harold, and I saw them, like, making comics all the time, and I just decided to make my own. My very first comic was, uh, I used to always make these Captain Underpants comics, <laughs> and, I used to, and I used to, like, I... I was when I, every time I couldn't find a stapler, I used to bring them to my daycare and just like have my teacher staple them. <laughs> wow, I guess that says how young you were when you were doing that. If you were in daycare, I mean, actually, he and Niall were at the same same daycare. Ah. <laughs> That's how we know Niall and his dad. Oh my god, ah. it's all connected. It's all connected. But uh, and that, I actually, and actually upstairs I found my um own. One of my old comics, it's called The Alien 2. Oh, yeah. So you saw these like alien books yeah. about uh, oh, this alien and his son, and his son drives him crazy all the time. It's a whole thing. <laughs> it's a whole thing. I love it. It's yeah, amazing yeah. what um, Captain Underpants has been like the best thing to happen to kids comic in so long. It's inspired. I mean, I, I all the time I talk to kids and I'm like, you, you like to make comics? Yeah, just like George and Harold. Like having the characters that make the comics in a comic has been the biggest boost to like kids making comics that I've ever seen. And, and yeah, so now I see like a lot of people before me, I think are gonna try um, like online comics, but I don't, I don't really know what app to use. Well, there's so lots. Of so I'm just trusting my search bar. <laughs> when I search of comic maker. You. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of free comics, like web comics, and um, uh, a bunch of different like sites that are specifically for comics um, that you can post your stuff up on, and it'll post it in order of pages and stuff like that. I have my uh, strips on a couple of those, but there's, it's a good way to get you know besides social media a good way to get your um, comics out there, or even Patreon. Some people use Patreon because then people can pay you to oh. 
make your comics. So those are so it's just some different ways that you could put your comics out there. Uh, so uh, Kagan, can you can you throw, throw that link up in the chat, maybe? Patreon? Patreon. Yeah. yeah. And what I do is like make comics online, not just like make comics on paper and then like post it online. It's gonna make comics like online. Hmm. Well, there are definitely some softwares that you can use to make comics online, but the the ones that I know of are usually like you you don't get to design the characters exactly. They have these like preset characters and then you can put them together to make um, characters. Yeah. What's that one you use, Coleman? The yeah. Google. No. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah. Toon -tastic, toon -tastic. No, it is from Google actually. Oh my God. But, uh, cool. So Sa, so what Tunecastic? But it's basically like it gives you characters and you can move them around. But it's also like um, uh, 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 stick nodes where you can like, they give you these preset characters and you can direct them to do whatever you want and add in. Stick whatever. nodes, you can actually make your own characters, except it's kind of complicated sometimes if you try to make a detailed character. There so I mostly just use the ones they give you. No. The author of Dropping Science. Yeah, when I was trying to make an online comic, I searched up comic maker and I clicked this link to an app. I don't, I don't know, I don't remember what it was. And when I, and when I tried to make a comic, I was like, okay, three panels. I scrolled down, but I couldn't scroll down because the app only let you make three panels of a comic. They probably wanted you to pay to do more than that. Exactly. That's how we get you. Yeah, but there's no add, add a panel button whatsoever. Like I couldn't do anything on it. I could only make three panels. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't seem like enough. <laughs> what comics and cartoons and video games and stuff do you like to read, watch, play? Okay, so uh, I like to I like to watch. We finished it though, unfortunately. I like to watch Teen Titans. It's a good one. Original Teen Titans, not the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I like to play Lego DC Super Villains. I love that one. Mm -hmm. What about books? I know you like Captain Underpants. Yeah, I, pre I pretty much stopped reading those now. You, what do you read now? Uh, Timmy Failure, that's your book. Yeah, right? Timmy Failure. Timmy Failure, I'm not familiar with that one. Is that a- It's a movie a... now, it's a movie now, but there are eight books. And he thinks he's the world's most, Timmy. so the plot, yeah. So, so, so. So he thinks so plot is it's this kid that thinks he's the he's the world's most famous detective. And in the sixth book, he actually opens he goes to Key West. He goes to Key West with his mom and opens a book signing. He made this book called Timmy Failures called Timmy Failures Un Um Educated Guide to the Uneducated People Who Don't Know Very Much. <laughs> and he thought people would actually buy it, and this and and his cousin Emilio, there was his like manager, and he and so he said he said to the reader like, do not hire Emilio Empanada as your as your program manager because no one would come. And then and he's like, yeah, don't don't need to hear the whole story. Stick to what you know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> and then and the old lady comes. Old, old lady comes and buys the card table that they were using. <laughs> At one point, she also buys the chair. Yeah. We got some other Timmy Failure fans on here, too, I see. I'm definitely going to have to check that one out. Absolutely. Timmy Failure is pretty good. Oh, here we go. See, I didn't, I didn't even know about that one. So, yeah. see, I'm learning things here today. I'm, to, I'm honestly learning a lot. I like the idea with <laughs> Captain Underpants that the creator is the focus. You know what I mean? That the, oh, yeah, good point. Good point. You get what I'm saying? I like that a lot of your books, that the creator, the person who makes the action, is actually the focus of the book. You guys are creators like that. You know what I mean? It's, sorry, I was, <laughs> I was just inspired by you. Good stuff, sir. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so do you do you make your comics with yourself by yourself or do you travel with your sister or with your dad? Well, 
So, yeah, my sister used to make, like, these Star Destroy Boy comics. It's this, it's like, oh, it's man. this kid, it's this kid who thinks he's a superhero and, his, and he thinks either his sister is some kind of enemy, like a dinosaur trying to destroy the city, and every time he's, and he's pretending like there's, like, like, house objects are criminals. That's so, like, like, so, like, when, so we'll show him in his Star Destroy Boy costume in, like, Gotham City or whatever, beating up these thugs, and then when you see him in his house, there's, like, a shattered vase, the TV has a crack in the middle, <laughs> it's just, basically a horror story for parents. This is like old school. Just, just this is like old school. It's like pre-pandemic, so it's like a long time. And uh, <laughs> and and then I just started making comics on my own, like Electric. So it's this guy with like powers. Basically, he has a Batman origin story. Don't want to get into the details. Don't want to get into the details. And so uh, buy the book. Yeah. <laughs> and after what happened he he landed in the water and he got hit by a lightning bolt and it gave him these electrical powers and then his uncle picked him up like got him out of the water and picked him up and then he became like the superhero electric and he pulled all kind of pranks on his sister and i didn't approve of that part just you know there's kind of a theme going there i see <laughs> and me and my sister just started this comic called Toaster Kid. So it's a comedy basically about this kid who was born with the toaster head. And the doctors cannot explain it. Like, he has perfectly normal parents. Coming soon. <laughs> and, like, no one, like, the doctors cannot explain why he has a toaster head. I love it. That is awesome. So a um, couple more questions for you. Um, how do you make your comics? Are you all pencil and paper? Do you get digital? Do you use software apps? Uh, I just do p pencil and paper, and but I want to go digital. I gotcha. Well, you know, it's um, they both have good things, as uh, Nina was saying, but it's very good to learn traditional styles before you get to the digital styles because digital styles is kind of a shortcut to the end result right so it's very good to learn traditional pencil traditional ink before you get into the digital stuff because it'll help you understand what the digital stuff is doing better so that's just my two cents on it yeah and with little league i was like kinda, i kind of rushed it a little because like once you when I, once I start making a comic, I think like, oh boy, I'm doing so well. And then I look, and then I look, and I only completed like two pages. And I'm like, this is gonna take forever. That's right. It's work. It's work. It's fun, but it's, it's work. work. Making comics is not easy. I don't know anybody was told that, but it's not true. It is hard, hard work and tedious work sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. So, do you are you gonna publish some of your work? Are you gonna put it out there? I'm gonna try to and oh and try to get a free table. And uh, to see what Coleman <laughs> did. <laughs> ah, Coleman's gonna pay for your table. The way things are going now. Jeez. Oh my goodness. And yeah, I just wanna be on that table. And I'm probably gonna make some like digital work and like try to like print it probably. And then me and my sister could color it. Awesome. Or we could just like tell the printer to put on the color because we're lazy. We're back in the uh, uh, Printers don't. <laughs> Do the color. Does. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sa. I'm excited about all the stuff you have coming up. Sounds like we're going to be seeing a lot of great work in April. OK, what happened to my house? A lot of great work. Uh, in April that I'm really excited to see. That's uh -oh. that was fun. Well done, I, man. What's happening? I oh, you're still I'm sharing, sorry. right? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still sharing. I think, is Golela next? Oh, yes, yep. Okay. Yes, Golela, please okay. jump on in. You can get in the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sa. Sa, that, Sa, that was a really good job. Bye-bye. Okay, go ahead, honey. All right, hello. Um, do you want me to do clicking for you? Uh, yeah, so my name is Alayla, and yeah, I'm 12 years old, 
but I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay, I'm 12 years old. I'm an artist, dancer, actress, and writer. I often spend my time reading, watching TV, drawing, dancing, and spending time with my family and friends. How I started. Okay, so I like to say that I was born reading comics because basically I was. Now, I'm not going to say that I did what y'all did because I know back in y'all's day, I know I'm not getting started on that, but briefly, you guys, you know, you bought, you went to the store, you bought your comics and then read them and then collected them. I didn't do that. I read like some, but anyways, so I still was able to- was old? Is that what's happening here? Am I getting called old? Yes. No, no, no. I just said like, mm. uh, okay. Just <laughs> stick to the script. Don't go off it. Okay, so <laughs> I was first introduced to superheroes by my dad when I was like, like around four. Since then, I've been obsessed with comics and graphic novels, especially my, especially with main characters that look like me. Storm is definitely my favorite. Okay, so my current graphic novel is called Sketch. Briefly, so Sketch is about an African American private school student, Zoe Ray, seen in picture, and Asian American scholarship student, Youth Lean, battling stereotypes and finding true friendship see pictures below so these are actually done digitally which we'll get to later but um those are my two main characters in the um He's back here. yeah so they're the ones on the blue one and then the other one so i've drawn most of these i've drawn these like on paper these ones i've done digitally digitally and the believe it or not the app i actually use is called sketches so um but yeah I usually it's just like a basic drawing type thing where you can like you know fill in colors and stuff but um the picture I used for the blue the blue one over there that's actually the draft of my cover which I have nice right so yeah perfect Okay, getting started. So writing a, no a graphic novel is surprisingly not a simple task. So the best way to start your own comic is to come up, with, come up with an idea and draw it. So before you even complete your story idea, it helps to draw or write ideas down. Another way to get started is to practice your own drawing skills. I practice drawing for my dad's novel. So he's writing a novel too. And um, I was, he wanted an artist for it. And I was like, yay. So, um, cause I had nothing to do. And um, I'm talking summer pandemic. We had nothing to do. So that's I was true. like, we well, almost nothing. Oh, no, that's not true. We, we were bored. Oh my goodness. Go ahead. Just, you know, <laughs> I, bu I busted my behind doing a summer camp. Okay, for but for some of the, <laughs> okay. time of the summer, some of the summer we were right, So I went on the app club sketches and I just, I drew these. So I would just, you know, these weren't quick. I had to like draw the circle and then the body and then the whole thing. Um, but I already, this is how I draw on paper. So I just use preferably like technology to draw these as just to add color easier instead of having to take the color pencil and go, <sighs> it, it hurts your hand a lot. Um, but yeah, so these are some from my dad's book that I drew digitally. So yeah. That's your last slide, I think. Yeah. Amazing. This is great work. And so you say, I'm sorry, I missed, did you say you draw it out um, on paper first and then digitally, or you just do straight digital? Um, I actually do a little bit of both. I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of like sketching in general on like, you know, just plain paper, but I do do them online sometimes just because it's easier to put the color in or sometimes I'll draw them on like online just so I can have like a vivid picture without having to, you know, waste so many colored pencils. Right, right. It takes a couple steps away to do it digitally, which is nice. So what's, um, so what are some books, games, shows that you like that have kind of influenced your 
your storytelling and artwork? Like what brought you um, to the, uh, the story that you were telling us about before about the uh, two young people? So believe it or not, and y'all gonna hate me for this, but it's also, I, it's from novels. Not, I mean, it is from comic books, comic books help me. But I did get, there are a lot of good books besides comic books. And I- no. remember, Okay, I know, See, I told you. No, I'm kidding, me. I'm kidding. We encourage just straight reading here too, you know? Okay, but um, I, I remember reading the Harry Potter books and then I was in class and I started drawing the characters That's and I was awesome. like, hey, yeah. I can draw. So I remember that drawing pretty much anything like really helps getting in practice of things. So yeah, I do like reading because it also inspires me to draw. I like, I'm in MCU completely, I'm devoted. Um, we've watched Loki, Vision, all of that. Um, and yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much my main stuff for that. Nice. Did you watch, um, so in, on Disney Plus Day, which I'm still very excited about, they put up these things like how they made um, all, the, all the MCU shows. And I watched the uh, one about Wanda and Vision last night. It was really interesting how they did it. I highly recommend it. Check it out. Yeah, I remember after all the movies we watch or anything, I'm like, let's see the bloopers. Let's see how they made this. Let's see how like all the documentaries I have to know. And like when I watch things, I know all the actresses from things because I always want to see how things are made, mm -hmm. which is really interesting and drives my family crazy, but who cares, right? No, it's, I find it very interesting. So tell us how you make like from idea, and you, you got into it a little bit, but I'm looking for a little more detail, like from idea to ending or what will be the ending, your process. Do you write the story first? Do you draw the pencil sketches first? Do you design the characters first? Like, where do you start? Yeah. So I usually start with like a basic idea of what the characters are gonna look like or what the story's gonna go. So I literally I just have, they wake up, they go to school and they go home. That could be it. But I just have like somewhat like a visual of it. So from the comic book, um, I have in, I have the book set up in two different um, personalities. So there's Yuki's who's more visual and then Zoe Ray's who's in more, like there's more talking you can see there's more talking mm -hmm. but with like little pictures sort of like diary of a movie kid but like that kind of setup so i here i'll show you a few pictures of what's happening um so i personally start with just sketching them so i'll just take a pencil and you know just put them in i might not even have faces on them i'll just put the thing with like a little cross thing on their face um so i'll just set them up that way then I ink them in. So I just have all the details already pre-written and just ink them in. And then I go back and then I color them. Now this is very tiring. I would say I would do, I did this in all in like one day, but I don't. I have to like sketch it and then ink it. I know I'm not gonna finish the book, like sketch it and then ink it. And then, no, I usually do it like chapter by chapter. So like I'll finish a chapter by sketching, then ink it, then color it in but I do I haven't done any like comics completely online I might try to but mostly that's just so I can have like a visual basis of things just have a few character ideas um things like that nice that makes sense and it's always good I like that you're um practicing drawing like doing your father's story because it's the whole thing behind like, you know, improving your artwork is to just draw, draw, draw. And you're clearly drawing a lot, which is really, really cool. So in the end, you know, what's the final product you want to come up with for your story? Is it going to be a graphic novel, a short book, a series of short books? Hey, so I wasn't, I would, I was going to um, like continue as a comic book a uh, graphic novel, but I'm not, so I'm sorry. But I'm doing this, I'm writing this actual, this novel, and the these characters are gonna like, 
they're gonna be connected to it to these characters but i'm gonna make it like tie into something um but i can still use my sketches and i'm still gonna draw them a lot because i still need things visually and there's still gonna be like pictures in the novel too because i feel like seeing things visually really helps and you're doing the sketches for my second book oh yeah i'm doing that nice keep busy there's a, an author who has been on here, a woman named Miranda Peterson, who writes novels, right? So it's, it's, it's essentially a novel. It doesn't need to have pictures in it, but she also puts in illustrations that she does of the characters or pages, like here and there, she'll take a certain scene that she likes and break it out into uh, you know, a couple pages of comic story. So there's ways that you can do both you know, also have a, a novel book, but also incorporate, um, you know, comics into it as well, if you wanted to, you know, I'm not, not shoving comics down anyone's throat, but they're the best, so. Well, very good, very good. Well, we are pretty much out of time. It has been really great talking to you, Golela. I'm really excited to see the work that you're working on and the um, stuff that's coming up. And all of you young artists have just been amazingly inspiring. And you know, that I'm just so like, like makes my heart warm to see all these young faces out here working on, in this uh, genre that I just love so much. And uh, just a bunch of stories that I am excited to read, a bunch of artists I'm excited to see what's coming next and uh, what's, uh, what they're going to build in this world, you know what I mean? because uh, you're all obviously super talented, super smart kids, and it has been a huge pleasure having you here on Comics and Color. You're all invited to um, the, uh, you know, the festival in April. I will be in touch about tables and stuff like that. Um, it seems like Coleman has given you all free tables, so we'll have to yeah. work out that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Thank you all so much for coming and being a part of Comics and Color. And you're all now, you're Comics and Color family. If you weren't before, you are now, because most of you were anyway. And uh, I just, I just, mad love to all of you and um, much success in what you do next. And if you need help or uh, advice or direction, or I can connect you to a resource or something, please feel free to reach out um, and um, you know, help, let Comics and Color help you uh, achieve your comic or storytelling dreams. So thank, thank you for you. the April date. Thank you for that date, something we could look right. forward to. Yeah. We're gonna start working, really inspired by all the work we saw today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, guys. It was wonderful. Now yep. say hi to your dad for me again. Great work, great right. work. You all have a great weekend and I'm sure I'll be talking to all of you very soon. All right, bye guys, peace. Bye. 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 Bye.